Welcome back to American Morning. Historians are having a field day with the newly released uh, Jacqueline Kennedy tape. Well, you can see why. It's yeah. fascinating stuff. An interview with the former first lady recorded four months after the assassination of her husband, John F. Kennedy, has been kept under wraps for nearly 50 years until now. Deb Ferrick joins us this morning. Uh, Deb, these, these uh, tapes contain personal information, personal comments that we've never heard before. Tell us about it. And in her own voice, that's what's amazing about it. And that is really what is so fascinating hearing the sound of her voice, how she expresses herself. She's so refined, patrician, frankly, very, very engaging. You can't help but listen. Also, there's a certain candor, a frankness. This is a woman who had an opinion about people, and at least in private, in the presence of someone she considered a friend, the interviewer, she was not afraid to share them. She talked about her husband's vice president, Lyndon Johnson, saying he had an enormous ego, and that his wife, Lady Bird Johnson, was in her words, quote, like a trained hunting dog. About about the Irish, she says, they sort of have this persecution thing about them. And of communist witch hunt Senator Joseph McCarthy, she says, he smelled of drink and his eyes looked awful. Here's what she had to say about civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. When we said what an incredible speaker he was during that Freedom March thing, and you know, when he acknowledged that having made that call during the campaign, yep. and then he told me yep, tank that the FBI had of Martin Luther King when he was here for the Freedom March. And he said this with no bitterness or anything. How he was calling up all these girls and arranging for a party of um, men and women. I mean, sort of an orgy in the hotel and everything. Martin Luther King? Oh, yeah. And, and first he said, oh, well, you know, and I said, oh, but Jack, that's so terrible. I mean, that man is, a, you know, such a phony man. Now, Jacqueline Kennedy was 24 years old when she got married, 31 when she became first lady, and she had the responsibility of hosting presidents and prime ministers and kings. While well, JFK's affairs are now legendary, listening to her speak and reading through the transcripts, this is a woman who clearly loved her husband. She wanted to be a good wife and mother, and she became excited when she made him proud. Here she is talking about the greatest crisis, her husband's presidency, the Cuban Missile Crisis. I remember saying, well, I knew if anything happened, we'd all be evacuated to Camp David or something. And I, I don't know if he said anything about that uh, to me. I don't think he, uh, but I said, please don't send me away to Camp David, you know, me and the children. Please don't send me anywhere. If anything happens, we're all going to stay right here with you. And, uh, you know, and I said, even if there's not room in the bomb shelter in the White House, which I'd seen, I said, please, uh, then I just want to be on the lawn and attack. No, but I just want to be with you, and, and I want to die with you, and the children do too, and live without you. Yeah, and there are just so many interesting personal moments. The gifts her husband gave her, she calls him sweet. The phone calls from the campaign trail, how he would take these 45-minute power naps, always changing into pajamas, even his vulnerability and his wisdom and compassion. She says she feared that the presidency might ruin her marriage, but in fact, she says it was the happiest time of her life, and she really evolves from a wife finding her way, suffering through complicated pregnancies, to a great partner and ally. And remember, she was just 34 when he passed away. She gave these interviews about four months later. She also talks about the things that she learned from her husband. And, you know, there, there's one thing. She's talking about politics and how complicated it is. And she says, you know, he would tell her, never get in anything so deep. You've lost chance, all chance of conciliation. So she was learning from him. And she just, you, know, you really get a sense that there was a connection. Whatever fights they had in their marriage, Marriage is complicated. Um, there was a real connection and a real warmth there. Caroline Kennedy, you know, mm -hmm. she played a big part in this book, right? And she was the one who agreed to release these tapes. And some of the things that Jacqueline Kennedy says are, are well, controversial. Well, it's embar embarrassing. You know, they're a little bit embarrassing, they're a little bit controversial, but also, you know, Jacqueline Kennedy was talking at a time when you didn't have to be always on guard about being so politically correct. There was a frankness. Here she is, a young woman. Would she have said these as she got older, said these things as she got older? No, probably not. But there she was, really given great responsibility. And, and it's fascinating to hear because it's what we would say. She did it for the history books, right? She knew that someday these would be made public. Right. These, these are secret tapes. These are the tapes of her right. giving her, her, her recollections of life in the White House. So think about how frank she was and how honest she was yeah. about it.
so kind of interesting. Yeah. Caroline Kennedy said that in the end she didn't want to um, she didn't want to edit them. She wanted to have them in her mother's own words. It was she a did. great choice. Yes, yeah. yeah. I think so too. It was yeah. a great choice, really. Yeah. Right. That's fascinating. Thank, Thank you. you. We asked you to talk back on one of the big stories.